Hi everybody and welcome to another video of Space Science with Python. Today I would like to talk with you about spherical kernel density estimators and it's more like an attempt but a final script because there's one small issue. My computer is crashing with the data. So I have 8 gigabyte of RAM which is not a lot. I could have deployed it to the cloud but I was thinking well you get the code you can run it on your machine if you have more RAM. I was a second machine, but I would really like to get everything running here on my Mac. Doesn't matter, the code works though, and I would like to switch first to the problem from last time. So what did we do? We created a sky map, a sky map that shows the radiance of the meteors. Yeah? The meteors, the, um, the radiance are the apparent regions where the meteor came from right like like if you drive with a car while it's snowing or raining then you see also the the, the the drops or the snowflakes are coming from a certain direction this is the radiant the so-called radiant in meteor science now this reference frame here if you didn't catch up the video from last time is not the standard j2000 one we have here for our observations on earth this is a special costume reference frame for our problem that um, co-rotates with Earth. So one vector is pointing towards the Sun, the other one towards the apparent direction of Earth. So we have a reference frame XYZ that is rotating with Earth around the Sun. And this led to this distribution where we have here the small, a lot of dots that show the radiance of the meteors. We have 800,000 or 850,000 around. And we have here also, we made them very, very tiny, uh, some alpha value, and the color indicates the velocity of the meteor when it was entering the atmosphere. And you see here at the center very high velocities because this is the uh, region in this coordinate frame where Earth is flying through, so the so-called apex, and the velocity of the meteor and the Earth is adding up. So I feel like around 70, 72 kilometers per second. In this region here is the so-called anti-helion direction. So the sun is on the left side. We don't see any radiance from there, only in radio, um, radio measurements, but not in visual measurements. And 180 degrees away from it, we have something called the anti-helion source. And on the top and the bottom of the um, sky map, we have something called the toroidal sources, which are uh, associated most likely with asteroidal sources. But don't ask me. I'm not a simulation guy. I need to dive into the papers to understand this as well. Now, single dots and scattered plots are, yeah, interesting to see, but I wanted to have some kind of continuous distribution. And for this, you can create a so-called kernel density estimator. And what this is, is, well, I didn't prepare any nice presentation, but imagine the following. You have some discrete dots scattered around and to create a continuous distribution, you are replacing each dot, for example, with a Gaussian distribution. So you have a lot of Gaussians and then you can add up all the Gaussians and then you have like, uh, yeah, this kernel, this kernel based distribution. The, the size of the Gaussian also depends on um, some of the information, uh, the information density. So you can also derive this. There are certain rule of thumbs and also other ways with grid search and what have you. But let's not dive too much into this. I have made a video in the past about that. The most important thing here is not the kernel density thingy because this exists in scikit-learn and also another library I'm testing today here. No, the thing is more that we are here in spherical coordinates. So we need to replace them in spherical coordinates and we have to consider all the distortion effects we have here. And also we are not allowed, let's say, to use the Euclidean distance but some kind of distance in spherical coordinates. The metric that you use here is so-called the Haversine metric. Now I was confused about distortions and even I can get confused by all these distortion effects, um, especially if you cannot compute it for 800,000 points because the computer is crashing. Now let's switch here to, well, yeah, let's switch here to the spherical coordinate script. I, um, I added a new library. It's from a Python, uh, from GitHub, um, from an astronomer who also created an, uh, an extra 
uh, KDE based um, algorithm for spherical coordinates works pretty well and I wanted to try it out. You can also use scikit-learn. Maybe I will um, yeah, put another video, maybe also a video where I compute the, the entire distribution in the cloud or so because it's still bothering me that it doesn't work. Anyway, I don't, don't want to bother you too much with the code because this is basically the same thing as last time. So let's skip this a little bit. And the most important thing is that I'm only using 10,000 data points out of 860,000 data points. Yeah, so only a small tiny fraction because as I said, otherwise my computer says no and it's good night. Um, but this is the most important thing and I sorted them also by the de declination. So we have only the upper region. The script itself to create the plot is very small. Uh, it's just the spherical KDE call here from the library. You need some kind of projection. We have here the item of projection um, in matplotlib. And then you compute it and you plot it. That's basically it. And let's have a look at it. And it's, as I said, it's, um, it's something for you to play around. You have also the previous codes and so on. So I would also like to, to, to enable you to work on this. Maybe create also some kind of a pull request, request or something like that. I would really like to have your results as well or your plots or something like that in, my, in the comment section or a reference to your GitHub repository, it would be nice to see what you guys are doing with that. So I was just making a small, yeah, I was playing around a lot. So this is not a, let's say, finished graph, but you will get the gist. And this is like one of the results. You see here the Terra on 10,000 data points and the green distribution is like the kernel density estimator based distribution of this. I was confused. I'm still a bit confused if this is 100% correct because Spherical coordinates can drive you crazy, especially projections can drive you crazy. And you have always to think, well, does it make sense or not, right? Especially to the poles, you have a lot of distortion and so on. So we see here, let's say a higher probability density function than the, than the region here. And I think, yeah, of course, more data points here to the poles, more distortion effects. Um, I think this is a correct plot, let's say, but you have to be really careful. Yeah, I would like to have the entire plot because I know the the the, the, the final result with the spherical um, with the toroidal regions and the antihelion source and so on. But as I said, uh, I cannot compute all the eight hundred thousand data points. I mean, one data point, one float is eight byte. I have eight hundred sixty thousand um, rows. So 1.6 million in total, 1.6 million of times eight byte is like round about a hundred megabyte of RAM, which is not a lot, right? But if you replace each individual dot with a Gaussian distribution that also needs some kind of grid, you can imagine that you can exceed a few gigabytes of RAM quickly. And especially if you have a MacBook with eight gigabyte of RAM where yeah, surprisingly, five gigabytes or six gigabyte are used all the time, then yeah, you can write in the comments, I should have bought it with 16 gigabyte of RAM, I deserve that. Anyway, um, as I said, I don't want to wait too much with the video. I would also sometimes maybe just show you the progress, right? Instead of talking for half an hour, show you the current result, and then you see the progress also being done. So this is in the script and as a small reminder this is like without the color code the uh, distribution of all 800,000 points and you see it's only a very tiny fraction out of this and you can imagine how the final distribution could look like and this would be really this would be really the goal i don't know if i have enough ram or i have the time also to get this thing running somewhere in the cloud i hope also colab has another enough of ram i will try to run it there um, but anyway, the main goal of this Meteor project is, and I would like to finish it because I really like to continue with other projects as well, is to create a machine learning algorithm to identify Meteor streams in an unsupervised way. And for this, if you are interested, I would suggest to stay tuned and see you next time.